That was uh, hand washing. Now sanitation. There's actually quite a lot of very interesting sanitation studies done around the world now that shows that there are many, many uh, interesting things that you need to take into account before you build a toilet. You need to know what are people's priorities. And this, uh, this study is from uh, Benin. And it's a, it's a study that lines up all the motivational factors for people to invest in a toilet. But have a look at this. Uh, at this, it's a ranked list. So number one is more important. <laughs> it is connected to some uh, to some uh, anime's traditional beliefs that you can use fecal material to perform like uh, witchcraft. <laughs> yeah. So if you leave your feces around, somebody can pick it up and and cast a spell on you. <laughs> yeah. And and that's so so leaving your your stuff around is is not a good thing. So that is actually motivating people to have a kind of toilet where you can compost it or keep it so it doesn't lie around. <laughs> Protect my feces from my enemies. Yeah. Feeling royal. So in Benin, just like in Ghana, you still have traditional uh, kingdoms. So people are still know what kingdoms they are attached to, even though it's not the official power structure. It's kind of a, of a parallel power structure. Uh, so at least royal families, they still have a quite very high social status, isn't it? Yeah. So if you if you can have things that uh, that the royal families also have, it makes you feel royal. And of course, they have modern toilets. Some of these royal families. Okay. So you know you need to know quite a lot about the local context in order to understand some of these things. For health is often uh, you know the, the disease related uh, motivation. So for example, you said uh, well they are not they don't know that it's, that it would make them sick, it's a, it's a, it's a bacterial danger, right? And that in itself is, is not a high priority, but the expenses related to being sick is very important. Other motivational factors to have a toilet, reduced smell is a very important motivational factor in many settings for different reasons, we'll get back to them. The environment, yes, so environmental conscience, so it's, it's less dirty, there's less dirt around, yeah. That is also mentioned in several times, right? For, for different reasons, not uh, not only for you know it's it's uh, disgusting to have feces around, but also very related to a sense of aesthetics. So if you have a very clean environment, you're also showing to others that I'm able to have a nice clean environment. Menstrual hygiene—that's also a very important gender-related factor, motivational factor for having a toilet. For girls and for women to have a place where they can go in and manage their uh, uh, perform menstrual hygiene, wash themselves, and dispose of any menstrual waste is an important factor, and it's becoming more and more acknowledged now. Yeah. Okay. So think about these things and investigate. Are there any perceptions in your site that might actually be the reasons why people would like to have a toilet? Okay. <coughs> so some examples of toilets. This is a toilet from a Highland uh, village in Vietnam. It has a two-chamber composting latrine design. So inside there are two uh, slabs with a concrete uh, cover on it, and they're using one hole, right? And uh, they have a urine diverting uh, pipe, actually, so the urine runs out of the toilet at the back, and uh, the feces is kept in a, in a vault there, right? Nice superstructure, everything was paid for. This toilet is not being used. Do you know why? It's not, it's not very light in this village. There were only four latrines installed, and when I came, I think it was three years later, none of them were. These are fully subsidized latrines. They don't pay anything, uh, but they do uh, provide labor. So all the materials and everything are, they're giving, and then they build them together with the in engineers that came. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it is true in this village, they, they really uh, did not care <coughs> about these latrines at all. They did, didn't want to maintain them at all, and they didn't have any sense of ownership because of these things. So, who said this, the smell? It's a closed superstructure, and there's a lot of smell in there. They really think it's highly disgusting, highly disgusting, because it's very tightly connected to some local perceptions about uh, 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 dirt, what is dirty and what is clean. And uh, smell in an, in an Asian uh, medical 
uh, perception. Smell is able to penetrate your body through the holes and make you sick. Smell carries sickness. So if you are in a smell place, you are very exposed to being sick. That's their, that's their perception. And, and actually in Europe, if you go back to the 15th, 16th century, it was exactly the same. So these ideas of bacteria as transmitting diseases are fairly new, actually, in our culture. And the, here in Asia, these, these perceptions are very prevalent. So it's very logical for them to get away from places with smell, right? Uh, they have no reuse practices in this place. They don't use fecal matter as fertilizers in the fields. So this design with composting makes no sense to them. They think it's highly disgusting. They were not asked, and they were just given without paying anything. They were not part of the planning. They were not part of the building or anything. So that's the idea. Do you see the pick here? So what did they do to solve this issue, these guys? They actually broke down, or they, they opened up the, the composting chamber at the back. They broke the, the seal, and they leave it open because the smell gets away, it evaporates, and the pigs can eat the fecal matter. And then you're rid of the fecal matter, you're rid of the smell. It's a logical solution, right? It's their logic, and that's what we need to understand. In terms of all kinds of health dangers, it's really wrong, right? This is a logical solution if you have these perceptions, and this is what you need to understand before you put in a, in a tree. Why is that dangerous? Uh, for example, uh, there's a lot of helmets uh, that, are, uh, that can be transmitted directly from the fecal matter to the pigs. And if you eat the pig meat, especially if you eat it raw or not so well cooked, you get the helmets or you get the, the cysts in your body and that will create quite serious diseases. But also just because they are you know, stepping in it, the pigs, and they're just spreading it around the village. So instead of concentrating the, the dirt and the smell here, you have it spread all over the place. Okay, this is in Laos. I had a student, a master student, went to Laos and did a study on uh, the tree program and found out that very nice the trees have been built and they don't like it. This is a single chamber pigment tree with concrete slab. It's not composting. They have a very big uh, concrete slab and this is just closed sealed when it's uh, full and it's moved to a different place, which is, I think, design-wise, it's over-engineered, I think. <laughs> but uh, um, they don't use it. Um, it's too nice. <laughs> oh this is one of the nicest buildings in the village. It's an extremely poor village. And it's so well-engineered, and it's uh, stable and uh, everything. And they simply, what they do is they put a lock on it, and they use it as the storage room or the garage for their <laughs> rice or for their motorbikes. <laughs> Right? Uh, why you shit uh, in a place which has been paid for and it's so nice? Why not use it for something that's really valuable? <laughs> and the most valuable things they have is the rice and the motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> you can find all kinds of these places all around the world. This is not because they are very special and, and funny examples. There are so many examples of sanitation projects that have failed because the engineers have not asked people what they think before they get the toilet. So it's your job to understand what kind of logics people have, right? Another big thing about sanitation projects is that a lot, of, uh, a lot of the people we want to give a toilet are actually not there most of the time. Uh, if you think about an urban setting, a slum area, people are very rarely home in their small, uh, small, small, maybe they have just a bed in the corner of a house where they're sharing with 10 others. So a home toilet might not be the perfect solution. Maybe they need a toilet at their workplace instead. So lots of things to think about. <laughs>